Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program, and it is a gorgeous Thursday. Um, and so we continue with the tastingroom.com, I'll link that up, uh, offer tasting, um, gotta taste these for the uh, monthly wine pack that I'm doing, and so there's a bunch of red wines here, and we're gonna do red wines today. As a matter of fact, Mark, get me the, no, look. Yeah, actually, you know what, get me the big ass glass. Just kind of look funny to see uh, these 50 ml pours in the big ass glass, which I think could be really cool. Um, and there we go, big ass glass. And so, um, let's go. So as you might have seen yesterday, if you didn't, you don't know what's going on, I'm picking random bottles, I have to taste them all. And uh, I'm just gonna pick some random red bottles to see what I like for my pack. So we're gonna start with, <laughs> it's weird, Goose Crossing. The Goose Cross, oh Goose Cross. We did Goose Cross yesterday as the first wine. This is the Goose Cross 07 Syrah. Do you think I should do different producers? Yeah, Ma? Okay, that's what you want, done. So let's move on. All right, here we go, Swanson, a legendary winery. This is their 06 Oakville Merlot, probably in the 20s or so. Um, really, really great producer. Uh, Swanson in Oakville is a producer that makes some very interesting premium, premium wines. Now I've noticed here that they've got expiration dates on the back. I gotta find out from Tasting Room what that means. February, January 2011, so not too long. So obviously in smaller bottles, they'd like to see people consume quicker. Very oaky on the nose. A little bit of Kirsch, a little bit of uh, Cassis but an enormous amount of oak, some blackberry. I'm, I'm taken a little bit back by the oak um, component on this wine. Big wine, big fruit, um, really nice attack of bark, black cherry, and a little hint of um, like cherry, like red cherry juice. Pretty good though, actually. Um, too oaky for me, but a lot of people would like this wine. I'm gonna score 88 points, because it's solid and I like it. I think a lot of you would like it even more. I'm not gonna put it in my pack, but I do think a lot of you would like this wine even more than I do, um, because it's a big wine with big fruit. I just think, for me, my palate's very sensitive to the oak, the oak monster, while others aren't. Um, so not bad, good start, 88 point Merlot. Little surprised, you know, it has, lacks a little Merlot characteristics, a little bigger than I would have expected. Anyway, ah, La Venture, 07, Cabernet from Paso Robles. Uh, great producer, big fan of this winery. Um, La Venture makes some great, great wines. Optimus, just big, big wines from the Paso. Uh, in my opinion, one of the best producers from Paso Robles. Um, and so, I like that. And so, let's see what happens with this one. I've got high hopes for this guy. Let's see. Big dark coloring right off the bat. Snippy snip. Just insane. Huge red fruit. Almost like, you know, red pie. Big fruit. Blackberries, black currant. Not a bashful wine. Let's give it a whirl. Try this, bombastic fruit. Big voluptuous Marilyn Monroe fruit. You know, dark cherries, blackberries, just chewy. I feel like I wanna bite it, I wanna eat it. I really like that about this wine. It's yummy, yum yum. Big wine and kind of the kind of wines I take pot shots at for being too big, but this one keeps its structure. It stays complete, I love the tannins. I like that it's fresh, there's black currant bark. Beautiful wine, big wine, big Cabernet. I think a lot of culty collectors would love this wine. This is the kind of wine I can get a 94, 95, 96 point from a Parker or a Spectator. To me, it's a 92 plus point wine. I really like it, and I very much think it's got a shot. To me, this is a fruit bomb that I can deal with. That's interesting. Mott? Yeah, the fruit bomb. I thought the finish was really, was just too much. Big for you, right? Yeah, it's 
Chicken. Almost sweet, right? Oh, it's, it's, it's everything you said. It was, it's delicious, but it's just... It's dessert. It's just too much. And you're a dessert wine guy. Yeah. Interesting. It's a big wine, guys. All right, let's move on. Acorn, 2007 medley. Uh, Russian River red wine. So this is a blend, and unfortunately, I'm not going to know what the blend is from this medley, so let's see what we think. 07. Acorn Medley, really cute name. I've never had a wine from the Acorn Winery before, so I'm excited about that. Let's do a little rinse. Let's see if we can kind of guess what kind of varietals are popping here. All right, Acorn Medley. Let's see. A little sniffy sniff. Very ten big ripe fruit up top, almost like Zin Syrah like. Not bad. Um, big red fruit. I um, it's funny. I'm like caught in between doing a wine library TV and doing like what I wanted. Like I'm in tasting. I can almost feel my body in a different zone. I'm in like tasting mode. I'm analyzing. I'm thinking. I'm actually ready to move on. But I know I have to articulate to you guys um, what's going on here. So you know, very Bordeaux like. It's a little thinner. Uh, Cabernet, Merlot, Zin, Syrah like, and in, in some you know flavoring. A um, little bit of tobacco leaf, which I find appealing and interesting, uh, but overall just lacks any kind of depth. To me, like kind of like an 87 point wine, because I like it in a lot of ways, but doesn't have that wow factor. It's just okay. I really don't have that much else to say. Just okay. Solid. Okay. Ackerman, man, I'm picking up a bunch of stuff I don't know. Ackerman, 2004 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's see what this guy's got. Um, it's fun though. I'm having a blast. It's a great way to taste wine. I mean, it limits your pour. I feel like sneaking these into a jet game. You know, like right now, when it's gonna get into the winter months. I'm gonna sneak a little you know, Swanson Merlot. Snippy snip. Now this is an 04 cap, so it's got a little age to it and I'm kind of getting that right off the bat. Smells a little bit more like aged Cabernet, which excites me. A little like kind of Kirsch cherry, sour cherry really. A little bark. Pretty, let's give it a whirl. This is interesting. This California cab from Napa, it's interesting to me. Um, I like the fruit. It's subtle. It's not too over the top. I feel like the oak has calmed down. I feel like there's mature, ripe oak or over the top oak calming down here. This is very appealing to me. This is something I may stick into the pack because I like mixing it up and I like giving people different options. Very, very wild in, in the fact that it's got some age to it. And God, it's getting harder and harder to find older Cabernets on the market. And boy, it hurts my feelings to think 2004 Cabernet is older. A um, little over oaked, just a hair, but it's definitely calmed down and it's rounded out by some great richness, sawdust, a little cedar, um, a, and a little hint of leather with the Kirsch kind of thing going on. I'm gonna score this wine 89 plus points. I like it. I, I don't love it, but I like it a lot. Yeah, interesting. All right. Let's go. Whoa. Mott, did you see what happened? It was amazing. Let's go somewhere totally different. Deloach, one of my favorite wines. Pinot Noir, coming in a kind of, so the Deloach uh, Mabarishi Vineyard Pinot Noir 07. Deloach makes some really interesting wines. You getting good zoom ins, Mop, by the way? Oh boy. Yeah, nice, man. Let's do a little rinse here. We're gonna need it, because it's Pinot. So we're gonna go a little lighter now. It's kind of how what happens when you taste a lot of wines. Sometimes you're gonna go from lighter to heavier, and that's gonna impact it. For sure, obviously my palate's now been drinking heavier wine, so this Pinot's gonna taste lighter if I just went Pinot up. But not enough in this kind of environment to like throw it off. It's not gonna go from like an 88 to like a 60. Sniffy sniff. And now we're in Pinot country, I like that. Kind of earthy, little leather, strawberries coming through. Let's give it a whirl.
solid Pinot. Um, before I move on, I want to give a big shout out to an, one of the original maniacs who uh, we want to uh, send our love to, Gene V, who uh, unfortunately got into a, a little bit of a motorcycle accident, right, Mont? Bicycle. Bicycle. Uh, want to wish you well, Gene. We love you, and we hope you feel better. Love you, man. Um, and I, it's funny, the reason Gene popped up in my mind right now is because this wine's classic. I always think of him as classic, you know. It's a very, you know, classy too. Um, very classic Pinot Noir style. Very Burgundian, if I may say so. Good job by Deloach. Very good wine. Definitely worth considering for the pack. Very clean, crisp, elegant. Uh, all in all, um, you know, and when I say crisp, very different than crisp for a white wine where you're looking for that acid. This is, crisp would be the wrong adjective. It's clean, it's well put together, it's tight. It's um, a very strong Pinot Noir. Maybe a 90 point Pinot Noir, even. So I'll score 90 points, and um, and I like it. Um, all in all, very ripe, strawberries. Pretty floral, nice Pinot. Little pepper, nice, really good Pinot. So it's fun to see uh, a Pinot jump in. Let's do one more to an area where I haven't picked a wine from. Let's get some new producers. Oh, this is that same kind of producer as we had with the. Let's, let's pick. Oh, sorry. There you go, a Zin. Nice. Storybook Mountain, 2000 Sim, 2007 Zinfandel, Eastern Exposures. So they, they have this great little single kind of Zin called Eastern Exposure. Oh, what did I knock over? Oh, a red wine from Storybrook, okay. Let's give a little rinse. You know, we're getting some different varietals. Just had a Pinot, a bunch of cab-based wines, and now a Zin. And as we get closer to Thanksgiving, uh, more and more of you should be thinking about Zinfandels. Let's give it a little snippy sniff. Big right for, Ma, smell this. So, tell me if you think this smells fishy or salty. Does it? Yeah, oh, I don't like that. You don't? No. Do you get that saltiness? Yeah. It's fishy. It is fishy. So there's like this cool like salty black pepper kind of, you know, red fruit thing that happens in Zins that gets them a little salty and fishy for certain palates. I thought you'd pick that up. But that's really ripe fruit mixed with black pepper um, and minerality. You know, kind of mineral saltiness. Let's give it a whirl. Blackberry jam, very jammy, very fruity, very Zinfandel. Nice spiciness. Um, I like the minerality, the crushed blue stone. I think serves this wine very well. I like it all in all. I understand where Mott's coming from. There's some people that definitely would find this a little bit too salty, fishy. Not for me. On the palate, it's really pretty. I'm going to score this wine 89 plus points. It's right there on the cusp of a wine that I get really excited about. No. Struggling, I think mainly the Levin Shore is the only wine that I think I definitely would put into the pack. Maybe the Deloche Pinot. Got a lot more tasting to go. But as you can see, the wine industry is tough work. Got to taste through all these, which I will. We'll tell you more in November and December about the tastingroom.com uh, pack that I'm coming from. Uh, check out them out. Feel free to get other packs, but hold on. I want you to get mine. And, uh, and that's that. Really fun, fun way to taste I hope this industry of half like 500 ml go, goes crazy because this would be a great way to get samples from wineries to taste on the show. Um, it's a good pour. And, uh, and that's that. So, question of the day. Zin, Camp, Deloach, Overture. How about this? It's mainly California wine. I heard they're bringing in other countries. But what is your favorite California wine of the moment? Lurkers, come out and play. You. Oh, by the way, all those comments from last Friday of what shows to do, uh, we'll be banging out those hardcore next week. With a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.